You shooting for the stars, huh? You just make sure you keep winning. Otherwise, I'm going to have to cover this one out for you. Power one. Power episode for the prince. They really should have called this power episode everybody gets a love scene. <laughs> you guys picked on me last week. When I told you Drew was gay and his dad is bisexual, y'all jumped all in my comment section saying, oh, he's just contemplating. I said, spell it. They said, oh, he's just a deep thinker. I said, well, what is he thinking about? And we learned this episode he was thinking about being the sausage for a man's hind parts. In this review of episode four, we're going to talk about all the crazy love scenes. We're going to talk about Tariq and his setup. And we're going to talk about some things that fans have said that have become theories, and we're going to break it down. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. This is my wife, Hello. and she <laughs> might have to step away to go get Baby L, who will not sleep. So y'all might be seeing another Baby L appearance. Having said those things, be sure to join me and Larry Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night as we go live. We take the best fan theories and we make videos for them and follow us on the gram. Honey, first things first. I also told them that there was a possibility Simon Stearns was gay. <laughs> I don't, when did you say that? I said that last year. Okay. And we find out that Simon Stearns has been divorced and he's remarried to a bash Kamal who now wants to cut a deal with Tariq to push his drugs and wash the money. This came out of left field for me. I did not see this not one coming at all. Not I'm like, me. what in the world? It, it almost irritated me because I'm like, okay, y'all just throwing whatever in the script, on the screen. Well, honey, this, they, the people writing this, sometimes they get things extremely right and sometimes they go a little far left. This is right on the money. You are watching a housewife show right now where the rich ass husband is gay on the low low, but don't want nobody to know it. Mm -hmm. You know which housewife show I'm talking about. This is a microcosm of rich and powerful white dudes that project they hate gay, but deep secretly they like it. Mm -hmm. And whoever wrote this hit it dead on the money. And not only did they hit it, they hit it with him having some young punk ass sitting in there wearing twenty. This this boy had a ring on every finger, honey. Uh -uh. <laughs> Like, like he's some Don Corleone. Had a ring on every finger. Lord yeah. have mercy. Well, they caught me off guard with this mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So, next next thing we're talking about, Tasha's telling Reed he needs a gun. This is straight out of the trailer. Now, the thing we want to know is where was he going to get a gun? Mm -hmm. How was he going to get a gun? And she lets him know that Tommy and Ghost had these stash places where they left guns. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go get one. I didn't think it should have been too much of a dilemma for Tariq because he can get everything else he needs. Why, why, why is it hard for him to get a gun? Well, like he said, all the people he get a gun I from is dead. Kanan. I got that. But he's crafty enough to get a high-end lawyer. To to He's crafty enough to do everything that he's doing, but he couldn't figure out how to get a gun. Yeah. If they didn't have any stashes around the city. Yeah. And he's underage. They kept mentioning that. All this stuff didn't happen to somebody that ain't even 18 yet. Uh-huh. Kept mentioning that. Yeah, okay. All right, the next scene we're going to discuss comes straight out of the trailer when they was talking about some kind of a school tournament. And people kept saying, because I said, I don't know what it could be. I don't see any college teams doing any type of thing other than debate. And people were saying that maybe it was a spelling bee. I was like, no, nah, I ain't a spelling bee. We find out it's a fellowship program. Mm -hmm. Jabari wants Lauren to join this fellowship program because he secretly likes the lives of black Oreos, which is her parents. So he invites her to get into the program, tells her she need to have someone there to be a student witness for the optics. And him knowing he really and truly wants to sleep with Lauren, that's what he's really trying to do, invites Professor Megram to this dinner. What did you think was going on in that whole scene? I just basically told you what the what the climax of the scene was. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot. Um, Professor Megram didn't know he was going to be there, so she was shocked. Mm -hmm. um, you get to see the dynamics behind Lauren's parents. Uh, well, we, we're going to get to that. Just the invitation of Jam uh, Jabari inviting Lauren, mm -hmm. then the look on his face when she <laughs> said she wants Tariq to be her her witness, her optics uh -huh. person. Well, Tariq volunteered himself. <laughs> right. And she right. didn't look like she was it was it was hard for me to read the look on her face. She 
it didn't look like she was happy. Um, I don't know. It was hard to read her look. Yeah, I think in that scene, she did a good job of being indecisive mm -hmm. in how she felt about Reek coming. But later on, we know she really wanted the big Reek Boski. Oh, goodness. We'll find that out. I mean, the way they set that whole thing up, it also seemed a little kind of off. Contrived. Yeah, where he was yeah. just like, okay, yeah. So, he was kind of surprised when she said, yeah, at my parents' house. <laughs> yeah, at, at the parents' house. Yeah. But, but Jabari knew the parents was of influence. Yeah. But, but I guess every yeah. student there, parents is probably When they influence. were setting up the invitation, though, she said, can we meet? And he said, what, like off, off campus? Like, yeah. he oh, wanted her yeah. to meet off campus. Mm -hmm. Which is, okay, if you a professor, that's a little, you know, a no-no. However... We know that that's what he does. Yeah. And he wanted them draws. So she wanted to meet at her parents' house. Mm -hmm. Good job, uh, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Because Lauren <laughs> don't want clean. And Lauren don't want to have nothing to do with professor. Right. She don't, so she ain't thinking about the we professor. We can meet with my parents. Right. And then he said, again, the contrived part was, oh, you need to bring another suit. And then, oh, you should invite another professor. Where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next scene, we see Kane and we see his mama. And we see them meeting up with that dude from GTG. The dude from GTG disrespects Kane's mama. Kane turns around, and whips his butt. Ain't nothing. To, ain't nothing. We should expect differently from that, is it? No, I guess he still didn't learn his lesson from the uh, visit that Kane and 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 what his brother paid to them on the last episode. Mm -hmm. So they had a, this come to this meet up moment and. They had to put him in their place. Now, what I thought was funny was when she oh, dared him to say it to her face. He said it. He tried to say it. <laughs> well, he was going to say he it. He tried to say it. He, on this, he got one syllable out his mouth, and before he could get the rest out, he was eating them words. He got the five-knuckle shuffle. Oh, goodness. Uh -huh. <laughs> he got that five-knuckle shuffle. Uh -huh. Now, because they have disobeyed her orders before, I do think there's going to be some retaliation from this. Retaliation from? GTG. Uh-huh. There's going to be some retaliation. He's the leader. You just got your ass whipped in front of all your people. And there's always someone below the leader who thinks they the two-bit. They ready to jump off. They ready to pop off. Well, so they, he didn't have that in his group. So somebody's in his group. The people that was with him, one guy was about to pull his gun out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Mary shut that down quick. She shut it down, but there's going to be some retaliation. Yeah. Um, you can cool mark those words. Next scene we're going to cover. Reek and Brayden established their crime organization, the New Age crime organization. They're setting this thing up through um, workforce students, through the app, through tutoring, and... The way they're doing it with the app is specific things you need to and represent specific drugs you want to get. And Braden, I've always said he's too excited to do this, kind of like Tommy. He's just way too enthusiastic about doing it. I think that's going to cause Tariq some problems down the road. But one thing he mentioned that I think is a nod to Tommy's show, Braden mentioned this thing is so big, and I quote, we can start selling weed in the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Where's Tommy's show going to be at? The West Coast. Tell us how you felt about the establishment of Tariq's drug empire in school using technology. Oh, goodness. I mean, it fits. <laughs> Love this, it. This new age way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So I can see it. But, I mean, I don't see it lasting too long. What? you on a college campus. That, I mean, kids can't keep their mouth shut. No. They probably going to have tutorials on YouTube on how to use this app and what type of drugs you can get by using the app. And I'm, that's going to shut it all down. Well, you just seen GTG. Uh -huh. They young as hell right. up there, Instagram and everything. They flossing, yeah. yeah. So you know that. It's not going to so, be contained on a college campus. They're going to get outed. Well, all Tariq's got to do is make sure it don't lead back to him. And so far, he's putting those steps in place. Um, next scene, we see Tariq walk up in McCl Davis McLean's office, and he brings them cash money. Paula, the investigator, has tremendous concern about what's going on with his money. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that scene with them and that recap? 
I mean, it just continued the storyline that she's suspicious of what you know where he's getting the money from. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't really remember anything else significant from that that scene other than you know her trying to figure out what's going on. Well, Davis McLean is basically like it don't matter where the money come from. I mean, long as long as we ain't getting in no trouble for it. And then he tells Paula, some of this money go to you. Mm-hmm. But see, what we didn't know until later on in this show, <laughs> there's a bigger narrative with Paula and Davis McLean. And the way he said, you getting some of this money, I thought to myself, it wasn't just like I'm telling any other co-worker you getting some of this money. It seemed like there was more intent. Mm-hmm. And we find out later, and we'll get to that next. So now the new, the new plan is they're going to go after Sax. They're not putting Tasha on the trial because we've seen what the hell happens to Tasha when you put her on trial. Her wig splits if the right woman can come in there and split it. So the new plan is to prove just how much Sax is an effort. Mm-hmm. and to put, punch holes in the fact that he shouldn't have anything to do with this case, you feel like that's the right way to go for Davis McClain and the crew? I mean, that's the only way to go at this point. That's, um, that's the only option they got? I can't think of any other options. Well, we learn later that there is another option, There's but that option. was a smart option. Mm-hmm. All right. Next, Monet sends Drew to basically spy on Tariq to see how he's got his organization set up. Mm-hmm. And this is when everything I told y'all last week. Wait, let me just say, now, it's funny how Monet is always lurking around corners. <laughs> I think it's just, <laughs> she is always lurking. So the kids were sitting in the kitchen talking, and here comes Le- Monet up again. I heard y'all. I heard what y'all was talking about. She always lurking in the room, lurking around corners, so they need to what, be careful what, what they say when they say it. Well, ain't that true to an old school nosy ass parent? I guess. Yeah. Like, y'all we, old that's school. Gonna us, that's going to be us. Yep. Y'all old school <laughs> nosy as hell parents is always lurking somewhere uh-huh. around the corner because you know when your child is too quiet, they up to something. Mm-hmm. And that's what she's doing. But she also, it also, is this the scene where, um, Kane was saying that he wanted to he wanted to go he wanted to go and Monet was basically telling him to play his position so yep. he's not comfortable with his position in the organization he want to be more than just a muscle mm-hmm. and it seems like eventually there's going to come a point where that's going to be a problem where the, he the, probably, he's probably going to overstep his bounds and try to do put, try to do some of the thinking well damn you just I was going to make a video about that but since we're doing it now why don't we just do it you can. it looks like it's going to come to a point when you're going to have a split up in the family. Some are going to run with daddy, some are going to run with mama, and somebody might try to start their own organization. Hmm. That's what's going to happen. When daddy get out of jail, however he get out of jail, you're probably going to have Drew and Diana follow daddy, and then you're probably going to have Kane say he want to do his own organization. <laughs> Leaving Monet in the dark. But I was going to say that for another video. Leaving Monet or running off of Monet? No, no, no. K- Kane wants to have more decision making. Mm-hmm. And... His mama's not letting him do it. He could run off with Monet. But she but might have to. If, that, if it goes the way that you're saying it is, she probably will have to let him get a little bit more responsibility right. because she don't, okay. have, she don't have a daddy no more. Right, right. So, and that's he will be a leader. They will be co-branches finally. Right. Okay, it if can it happen happens, like that. That's an interesting right. uh, take yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, but I was going to do a video, but hey, you, still can. you know, at any, you can any event. So, Drew comes and shows up to spy on Reek. Reek knows he's spying, all right? Mm-hmm. And Reek has to take him to art class. It, doesn't this play right down the role of those, those the, the stereotype they're trying to portray? He gets into art class. They set him up with this black dude. And I knew by the way that Drew and the black dude was looking at each other like they was both chocolate chip cookies. I had already known. I knew from last week. Any event, they're talking and they're talking about drawing and paintings and canvases. Honey, did you realize at that point that Drew was gay? Or did you know before? I had a suspicion last episode. Um, oh, so you believed in your husband I, last I episode. I had a suspicion last episode because it was some of the things that he was, it, some of his mannerisms. They mm-hmm. were like real subtle, but I think they were trying to tell us that that, mm-hmm. he, that was the case. Just like the daddy. The mm-hmm. daddy is bisexual, but nobody don't want to listen to a brother. But you'll find out. Mm-hmm. Next scene, Cooper Sachs has a niece named Riley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she gets caught buying weed in, in the park. Because her her normal guy's gone. Cooper Sacks decides he's going to use her. And during the interaction with them, she's basically saying, well, what do you want me to do? 
get the family to quit calling you Nancy. Mm -hmm. And then we also find out that her parents are two women. Mm -hmm. Her mom is Courtney and her other mom is Lacey. Mm -hmm. So Power is going full in with the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to them. How do you think this is going to end with Riley and Cooper Sacks? Cooper Sacks is an F up. <laughs> Riley looks to be somewhat of an F up too. How is this going to break down? Uh, Riley is, she appears to be very headstrong and he's not going to be able to control her or contain nope. her. Mm -mm. So she already is doing her. He tells her to do one thing. She's going to do the exact opposite. Yep. And so, But I still think she's savvy enough to be able to kind of hold her own. Or, or get out of certain situations, but we'll see how far they're going to use her. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, if she's rocking or do every, anything that Cooper Sacks say say, tells her to do, it's going to be a mess. Oh, it's going to be... That, that, ladies and gentlemen, this show is so good. I told y'all, if they made a good story, y'all were going to forget old ghosts and you'd be fine with this Reek thing. I told you. We'll see. Yep. And it, it, every, every week they add in new layers that make this show have to go on for more than two or three seasons. They keep adding layers. But my issue with Power is they have so many different layers and so di so, so many different arms to the story yeah. that they let some stuff just fall flat. It's like they don't have enough many enough episodes to develop it all. Mm -hmm. And then we wondering, well, what's going to, well, whatever happened to that or what was the point of that? The, the point of that is so that if they keep getting renewed for season after season, they have something they can all pine to that they didn't finish in the last season. Like some of these stories, like let's take this next thing we're going to talk about. Rodriguez is deposed. This is this is uh, McClain's way he thinks he's going to get at Cooper Sacks. Mm -hmm. He deposes her because he knows she's got an axe to grind with Cooper Sacks. She's in there talking all about how Cooper Sacks went all out the chain of command, put the thing on Lisa, Aliza Marie who's underage, got that, one, got that thing on her wrong. Mm -hmm. Then... Cooper Sacks turns the tables on her and says she was complicit. <laughs> says, says Rodriguez was complicit and lied about the, the Terry Silver thing. And then that bounces to they got to go get Tate. Mm -hmm. We really didn't have any. We still want to know what happened to Elisa Marie. Right. All right. And by them not filling up those holes, it allows them the chance to, if they keep getting more and more seasons, Jump these are, into right, it. these are, now speaking of all that, how did you feel about the exchange between Cooper Sacks and Rodriguez? <laughs> uh, I don't have any strong feelings about it. <laughs> it just shows me that they, they both are crooked and Rodriguez is just hot that Cooper Sacks won up her because she basically was complicit in his crookedness. Now, she wasn't, she wasn't happy about it. Mm -hmm. Like, she didn't like it. But to get Andre Coleman, right. she made him lie. Right. And so, and from there, they decided that, hell, we're going to have to go get old Short Man Tate, my boy, which I don't understand why y'all don't like my boy Short Man Tate. Short Man Tate. So the next thing they go, we see Short Man Tate sitting in there with Steve from the DNC and John Mark. Mm -hmm. And they basically are telling him, you're going to have to lie. The DNC is forcing you to lie because mm -hmm. he's going to have to take the stand. Right. Now, what do you think is going to happen when my man Tate... I can't wait for that. <laughs> I can't wait, but go That's ahead. That's because Tate is like the ultimate politician. Ultimate. Anything he says, he's going to bring it back to the betterment of, of, the, of the political scene for New York and he's your man. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm, he's probably going to tap dance around everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Don't Listen. worry. I can't wait. <laughs> Next scene, Paula catches Reek at his, his place where he's staying at and grills him about the money. Reek lied and said he's stealing the money from the grandma. So that can wind up being a story because they might go investigate the grandma mm -hmm. and say, Grandma, has Reek been stealing your money? Mm -hmm. And while Reek is telling her that and she's saying, I can help you, you need to get your money clean, she sees the gun that he took from the washerette. Mm -hmm. That scene was straight from the trailer. What was in the washerette? The gun, Tommy and the crew had hit in case they had to run. One of their drop spots. So what do you think is going to happen between Reek and Paula? What do you think they're going to I mean, name? Paula in that scene was reaching out to help him. I right. guess she kind of looked like he had his back against the wall and, you know, he didn't have any other options. And she offered to help him. And I don't know what that help would look like, but she seemed like she had a little soft moment with him. Um, during that scene. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems like she's going to kind of be a mother bear in this whole thing. Maybe. Yeah. But then the thing is, after she saw that gun, did that make her a little bit more 
suspicious. Yeah, or for sure. Is she, she going to be that that willing to re to help him mm -hmm. when she saw that gun? I think she will be. So I in the one way he's he's trying to act like he's helpless, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, she see that he has his gun. And so I don't know how which way she's going to go with that. And that was a drop on his part. Why the hell you got the gun in your book bag, Reed? Yeah, come on, Reed. That that was a drop on his ball. But um, I see her kind of being a mother bear figure that's going to get caught up. She could be collateral damage. Because mm -hmm. you, you, we'll talk about how they done weaved in her story, but she could wind up being collateral damage but too. He, so he's still in stacks of money from his grandma? Hey. And those aren't like clean stacks of money. Those look That look like money that's been, you know, pieced together. Hey, and grandma paid. If she's a detective, she you would think she would know. She's not a detective. She's an investigator. If she's an investigator, mm -hmm. you would think she would know what dirty money looks like. Mm -hmm. And that's like just like stacks of these loose random bills tied together with rubber bands, whatever. And they probably smell funny. Yeah. So she should know it ain't all come from one place. Unless, now there is one caveat that old people tend to put their money under their mattress. And in their breasts. So maybe and then they that could be a little bit of his saving grace, but could still, yep. she, she as an investigator, she should know something is up. We'll I mean, she does. She knows something yeah, is up. Yeah, she know. Next scene was the infamous scene that I'm sure y'all want to forget. Some of y'all, Drew and his love scene. Homeboy had a tattoo, a 24, an NBA championship. How the hell is he trying to do basketball when they're at the same school where Drew's cousin mm -hmm. is the basketball star? Mm-hmm. There can be more than one brother on the team. Well, they just highlighted last episode that the next best guy on the team is the white dude. Uh-huh. And he was talking about the same white dude trying to hold him back. Uh-huh. So he's the third best, but he thinks he's going to go to the NBA. Yeah. And And Drew's just rubbing on that 24. Just, oh, goodness. And rubbing on that championship saying, you better win. I'm going to have to draw on that. Then they have their smash love scene, and he gets called away by his mama. Mm -hmm. What did you think? I, I'll tell you what I thought about the whole scene. And Monet highlighted it after that scene. So, he's so bent. Oh, goodness. It was so quick to get him distracted from what his goal was in the first <laughs> place. So, Monet calls his phone. No, actually, when he looked at his phone, he had four missed calls from, from Tariq, Tariq. And that's yep. who he's supposed to be telling this whole time. Because Tariq need more product. Yeah, he basically told on himself when, you know, Monet, Monet had, uh, what's her name? Diana. Diana answer her phone and put it on speaker. When he said, Tariq has been blowing me up and I'm not with him. Can you come? <laughs> Where the heck are you? <laughs> Where are you at? What are you doing? He's being a human man sandwich. Oh my goodness. He's that is crazy. <laughs> you yeah, so basically he's so so he can get distracted by love, mm -hmm. basically. In essence, or that, lust or whatever you want to call that's, it. That's that's his weakness. Mm. And for people who are in the LGBT community, it, it's a mindset. First of all, it's taboo in our society, even to this day, that you're gay in the first place or a lesbian. And so when you find someone that is lesbian, y'all like each other, you know, it definitely becomes a, a huge weakness because now you feel like your soul is free. You just want to be tied up into this individual. You just want to do your own thing. This is Drew's weakness. And Mary, and Monet knows it. Mm -hmm. That little speech she gave him about always coming home mm -hmm. lets me further know she knows it because she worried that that boy going to meet his love and he's going to dip. Right. And she's worried. Next scene, as she mentioned, Diana is sent to give Reek more product. <laughs> and Monet already know, didn't send Diana in the first place because she know Diana is weak for Reek. Mm -hmm. So Monet is operating with a whole lot of weak-ass children. And when, <laughs> when Diana get over there, she gives Reek the money, and then she gives Reek a kiss. Mm -hmm. Boy, the, the, the love quadrangle for Reek started this episode. He, man, that boy got more kisses then black folks in Atlanta on Valentine's Day. It was kisses left and right for Tariq. Everybody. Mm -hmm. The only person that didn't kiss Tariq was Megram. Oh, good. Thank goodness she didn't because y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with her. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all a clip about what we're going to talk about next scene. I'm going to show it to you right now. <laughs> I don't know who was behind that attack, but if my own flesh and blood hadn't been out there to save me, I'd be six feet deep next to James St. Patrick right now in New York would have an uncertain political future. Honey, my man Tate, 
is in there with the Judge McClain and Cooper Sacks. Talk about the performance he put on oh, when man. Cooper Sacks and McClain tried to throw him under the bus. Talk about his great performance. I love this. I mean, he showed. <laughs> he, Tate did what Tate does. He did some uh, some verbal <laughs> gymnastics and, <laughs> and, and, and said why he was compelled to lie on the stand or lie to whoever he had to lie to to save himself <laughs> and his family and, and for the betterment of the political structure of New York. Of New York. Yeah. He, he talked about how Tasha pushed him in the corner, how he was about to die. He was afraid of his life. life. And he had to cut a deal with Tasha to get the daycare. And he still, because the DNC don't want no dirt, still did not throw James under the bus. Mm -hmm. He Cle said... Cleaned that reputation up good, he, good fast. He sure did. He said oh, when he knew James, James was a man of the people. Right. And he only <laughs> bashed him for some, for just political sportsmanship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy... And then he gonna look at McLean and say, "Us blacks." Uh -huh. Like, and McLean is sitting. The look now, Method Man is giving hellified looks when people say stupid shit. Like, he's giving the look he gave after after Homeboy gave that speech. Was like, bro, you sitting here lying to my face. Uh -huh. And the look McLean gave last week after Tasha got scorched by Tamika was priceless. That, Davis McLean, you hitting home runs, baby. Now we move on to the dinner at Lauren's family house. Talk about that whole interaction. We go from learning that that family is, you know, I guess if this was slavery days, we might call them Uncle Toms. We learned that Jabari is a penis sucker of those type of individuals. We learned that he wrote another book, now, what a I, second book. What I didn't understand was why Jabari was sucking up so much to her because, family. Because that's who he is. That's who he. Did and, her, and, did oh, her, fan, her parents got status or something? They've got to. They have to. He was just like too eager. Kissing they, but I mean, I, don't get I it. seen the brown on his lips. Just, well, in that case, why don't he just get a? I mean, just, just get a get a fellowship to um, Lauren and and call it a day. Well, he's probably gonna do it. He's probably gonna do it. Hmm. And, and and so professor, they talking about his book or whatever. <laughs> professor, they they ask him when is your next book gonna come out. Professor Meeker said that's happened months ago. <laughs> but then ain't the books that he writing aren't they like they're like the like first book literary literary the first, masterpieces. No, the These first like, book was a tell all about raw about Professor Meeker. Whatever the second book was was nothing because they didn't even know it had been released. It sounds like he's writing some fiction romance, some right. freaky, freaky type right. stuff. Yeah. And so why are they sitting around talking about we waiting on your next book? <laughs> And what they kind of didn't, stuff is he writing? They didn't even know the book was out. Uh huh. They didn't even know it was out. So oh, that just. Uh, oh, but uh, what's her name? Kate? Professor Megram. Megram. She, she didn't have any problem letting them know it was out. <laughs> it came and it went <laughs> and, without making a noise. Right. And so then they bring up the book Prince, which was the title of this episode. And the family is all into their pseudo perspective of the book Prince. And then Tariq breaks them down about how he sees this as a book that's showing opportunity for you to take out your competition. Mm -hmm. And did you see the way Professor Megram was looking at Tariq? I know mm -hmm. her underwear was wet like a super soaker. Oh, she was looking at him like the way I'm looking at you. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. That's how oh. she was looking at him. That's how she <laughs> was looking all... at him. I mean, this dinner was not your traditional Sunday no. Big Mama dinner, ladies and gentlemen. No. You <laughs> got tension between Lauren and her parents. You got tension between <laughs> Professor Megram and Jabari. and Jabari. You got Jabari trying to kiss up to the parents. Yep. Reek is the only one who's just calm, cool, and collect, just sitting back looking at the story. Then Lauren gets up to go find the professor's book. She brings Reek with him. We find out she has a brother whose parents put so much expectation on him that he basically cracked up yeah. and got put into an insane asylum, whatever. Or some type of institution. Right. Yeah. And then we see Quirky from Dorky pops up. Lauren's boyfriend from D.C. pops in. And when I tell you, all I could think of was Carlton from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air oh, or Terry Silver. It's like they're trying to reenact Terry Silver in that guy. That's all I could think And then he's going to have the nerd to disrespect Reed. Oh, this is the high school student you're working with, Lauren. Mm -hmm. But the one part that you might not have caught when they was cutting from the scene, I heard Jabari say something along the lines of, he's going to do well. He's going to make it. It was the Jabari of the daddy. Uh -huh. 
-huh. talking about um, Lauren's boyfriend that popped in. Uh -huh. He's going to make it. He's going to... Yeah. Why the hell he going to make it? Because he know how to talk like y'all. Because he wear these tight ass vests, yeah. collars well, and stuff. That don't mean nothing. He's a, yeah, he's a Tate in the making. That, that don't mean yeah. he's a Tate in the making. Uh -huh. That don't mean nothing. He could, he, could also be, he could also be a Brayton, a Brayton brother in the making. Mm -hmm. Get cocained out. Mm -hmm. Thinking that your privilege is going to take you somewhere. Well, regardless, he know how to put on the show. And uh, apparently he got the parents eating out of his hand. So. Yeah, his his name is Malcolm, ladies and, and gentlemen. So, of course, and, there's going to be more to that. There's going to be tension oh, between course. Malcolm and Tariq. Yeah, and, and Malcolm and Lauren. And we're going to see the dirty side of Malcolm. And this is the traditional story where dudes like Malcolm get mad at the way the world is. So, Malcolm is this dude who's on a good track. Tariq is a hoodlum in essence. Uh -huh. And now you're gonna, it's going to be like, you're going to pick that hoodlum? Who's doing drugs over me? Who's selling and, drugs. Yeah, and this is what dudes like that get mad about across the world. This, this I mean, power setting up great narratives, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how they're gonna get out of that one, but they might use it. They might not. But why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, I and, mean, and, be I, interesting and I could easily see Malcolm being a sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. Easily, easily. <laughs> oh, boy. So now we get back. Carrie and Jabari are back in their office. They're arguing with each other. They're having a, a fuss out session. Carrie basically accuses Professor Jabari of screwing all the young girls. Basically like, you, that's what you want to do with Lauren. Mm -hmm. And he accuses her of not fulfilling needs, blah, blah, blah. Now, what, you, what did you know was going to happen? You saw this coming a mile away. Mm -hmm. I actually saw this last episode when he was in there <laughs> having sex with his uh, his his grad student or whatever mm -hmm. that eventually him and Carrie were going to do it again. And like Larry said, he done that for the sake of Carrie to see of it. Of getting her jealous. Yep. And, getting, getting and she couldn't up. take it. And, and she couldn't take it. And she got worked up this time. And she yanked his pants down in true sexual addict form. I mean, yank them down. Okay. Only thing she ain't do was take his shirt off with her teeth. Okay. That's all she ain't do. Yeah. But anyway, like I said, we saw this coming a mile away. <laughs> Next scene, Cooper Sacks has got his niece working undercover for him to get information on Tariq. So he sends the niece into the party that they're having. They plan, they plan, um, not Little John, but they plan, I can't, uh, Yin Yang Twin the party is live. <laughs> She goes in there, Tariq treats her dirty the way he's supposed to. And now, if you're supposed to be a smart drug dealer, you know you can't be friends with everybody. Right. So he diss her. Cooper Sack said, don't talk to her, Tariq. She made a beeline for Tariq. To Straight talk to, to Tariq. So there's, <laughs> I, like I said earlier in this video, dissension already, ladies and gentlemen. I already said that. And while she's, when she went to talk to Tariq, she meets Brayden, who takes a liking to her. Mm -hmm. And while she's doing that, Tariq sees the competition upstairs, highlighted by Brayden. So Tariq decides, I'm going to unravel the plan. I know how to take out my competition. All I got to do, Tariq remembers the white privilege that was showcased last episode. So he goes up there, tells them that Brayden is the one doing the drugs, selling the drugs. Homeboy go down there like a fool, start a fight, and Brayden beating his chest out now, mm -hmm. trying to look good for Riley. Brayden was holding his own. And I think Tariq wanted to see how Brayden would handle under pressure too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't think Brayden had it in him, but he was he was taking care of business. Y'all ready to call y'all ready to call Brayden the new Tommy? I'm starting to get that mm -hmm. way. And in in the end, what happens from the whole situation was homeboy that was selling the drugs, the competition, is now gone because he was messing with a Weston. He got suspended for right. Yep. Tariq played chess on this one. Not only did he figure out how to get rid of the competition, but he wanted to see how Braden would handle himself under pressure. Right. And Braden got hands, man. Braden got hands and white privilege. And you got a black dude on top of that leadership. You could write this story for 20 years. And I think Tariq also has his eye on Riley as well. Oh, of course. He was eyeing Definitely. her too. That, well, that's why he walked away. Yeah. He knows something. So, to me, this is... this is. Can't y'all see the revisiting of Ghost and Tommy? Because Nat, t Braden is about to get involved with Riley, possibly. Mm -hmm. This is no different from Tommy when he got involved with that redhead chick. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Now, is Riley going to be feeding... Cooper Sacks or Brayden and Tariq? She's going to be taking information from Cooper Sacks, potentially, and mm -hmm. feeding it to Brayden and Tariq to protect themselves. Yep. This this ain't nothing but a new Tommy Holly setup. That's all it is. 
Tommy Holly setup. Braden Riley. It's a Tommy Holly setup. I can see that. Yeah, that's yeah. all this is, ladies and gentlemen. I was going to do another video on that. Matter of fact, I will do that video. I I'm giving y'all the goodies today, all of them. All right, now we get down to Method Man is screwing Paula, his investigator. Honey, you don't poop where you eat. Mm -hmm. you, you, don't enter, you don't fraternize with people you work with, especially when you marry, and they made a point to let us know that he's married because go and tell the folks what you had to say. I mean, he took his ring off, and I'm like, well, why did they take their ring off? It ain't like it's going to be like, oh, so you take your ring off, you ain't married, you put it back on, you're married. Can, can I ask you a question? What? When me and you done things to create our child, do I ever do it with my ring on? No. You don't, most you don't men, wear your ring now Most like that. men don't put, the, most men take their ring off when they get into bed with anyone. It ain't just a, I'm cheating with my jump off, taking off my ring. It's just, I don't want to have sex with my ring on my finger, period. So, oh, whatever. Yeah, okay. yeah. But any, in any event, she kept getting text messages during that scene. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, it was a wire transfer from Bam, the guy that's now working with Tariq, who's the married lover mm -hmm. of Stearns. What do you think was going through her mind during that whole scene? Because, and she also mentioned Method Man's wife's name is Marilyn. What do you think yeah. was going on with that? Um, so going back to the backstory with uh, with Method Man, he shut it down when she when she shut it down when he was about to make some type of excuse about his wife. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it makes you wonder if I don't I don't it's there's more there where it seems like his wife isn't much of a of a factor he's trying to downplay his relationship with his wife it doesn't seem like he's like just simply off cheating on his wife with her it seems like maybe i don't know if they had a relationship before the wife or if there's something deeper yeah or may, or may, the two or them. maybe it's one of those situations where she's expecting him to leave his wife and he hasn't done it yet it could always be that yeah it's something there yeah it's and definitely, so we'll, it's definitely yeah. a there there we'll knock on the door and see if we can get so in. So we'll come back later to that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure they're going to reveal whatever the issue is later. Right. Um, right. So with the LLC thing, it plays out the way she said it was. She called this a couple of episodes ago where she said eventually, you know, we're going to start getting um, payments from this, you know, shady LLC and they're going to mm -hmm. shady LLC. There it is. And and again, Method Man don't care. It's like, this is your money. <laughs> like, we don't care. We ain't, do I mean, it don't matter how the money get to us as long as we get the money. So, uh, but th that. I mean, but if the money is legitimately coming coming from his grandmother, like he said, why all of a sudden are they getting money from the LLC? Because she basically told Tariq, you know, you need to have this money legitimized. I guess for her, it's kind of like, okay, I just talked to Tariq today, and, he and said now he tonight, got it from his grandmother, and now tonight I'm getting money wired to me from a shady LLC. Meaning it ain't coming from your grandma. Right. She's breaking it down. Right. I'm telling you, she she could be collateral damage too. Now she played um she played on the Fosters. There was this TV show, like this family oh, friendly Lord. TV show oh, with God. these two women who adopted all these kids. And I, I thought that was the cutest little show, but anyway, she and played you, Paula played on the Fosters. And you also mentioned how she didn't really show her body because she has a an image of being a sweet, wholesome mother to protect. Maybe I mean from maybe she wants to do other things and she feels I was about like, to say, ain't nothing sweet and wholesome about power. You no. grimy, you dirty, you showing it off. Well, she's an actress and she don't want to show her body. They she, didn't show it. Yeah. She showed enough. Power is 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 infamous for putting people, putting their breasts and all that stuff on there. You seen Angela, you seen Tasha, you seen, you know, everybody, but you ain't see her. Because because he could cover her breasts up with his hands, so it wasn't nothing to show. That don't mean nothing. You what you oh, so it's just nipple. What? Nipple? Didn't it, you even it, see Lala? Was Lala did, did Lala get up there like that? Comment below. Did Lala, she show something one time? I, one time. Out of all her love scenes, uh -huh. one time. Uh -huh. Once. Well, this is one actress who doesn't want to show her body like that. You can see all the, you can't see her nipple, I guess. That's, that? that's, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Exactly. All right. Last piece of this puzzle, ladies and gentlemen, to this episode, which was a good one. They end on showing Tasha doing push up. Now that wasn't realistic to me. I do not see no Tasha in no jail Tasha cell doing trying to get ready for war. Huh? Doing push up. Yeah, maybe that's what she's, she's doing. She's from the streets, right? She, she said, "Don't let this 
Don't okay. let this Gucci fool you. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Tasha was in there doing Gucci ass push ups, all right? And they show, she gets sent the picture that Drew took of Reek in the art class. Uh -huh. Basically said he better continue to do like he did on day one. Mm -hmm. So y'all remember that day one thing because that was an issue last season. This was Tariq's day one. And then they show another picture of Cooper Sacks that cuts to. Riley took a picture of Tariq standing on the balcony looking down on his empire. Mm. Any significance with those two picture scenes for you? That was basically go standing in his nightclub looking down at everybody down below. For, for me, since both pictures was talking about Tariq, all that that highlighted for me was the title of this episode, He is the Prince. Mm. He's the fresh prince of this college he's at. Okay. That's what it highlighted for me. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this long, great, drawn-out review. Don't forget to like our video. Please comment, subscribe. Follow me and Larry as we go live Monday, Wednesday, Friday night. We do power. We do politics. We do stocks. We do current events. We are going to start calling ourselves a new name. They call themselves the Breakfast Club in the morning. We might have to start calling ourselves the Dinner Club because we bring it raw and hard on those nights. Follow me on the gram. And until that next Sex is Hell video, we'll see you.